So let's go to see the uh, equations for cridging. Um, as soon as in other metals, in uh, as um, as well as in as in other method, uh, we assume that we have to calculate a, a quantity that we call hat z z zero z zero z. Uh, but I will call z zero. It's simpler. Uh, hat z zero okay, that can be obtained as the linear combination of the known data measured at points E, I. So our uh, hat Z zero is equal to the summation over all the points we have, where we have measures from one to hand of lambda I, zeta I, where lambda I is a weight, R weights. And um, the problem here is that we get the, we, uh, we get the measures uh, z, uh, z sub i somewhere else, but we, uh, we don't know the lambda highs. Uh, so the first thing is to, uh, we define the error. Uh, the error is epsilon equal to um, hat, z, z, uh, hat z zero, uh, minus z, uh, z zero, where z zero is uh, the uh, the known value of the measure. If we just substitute the uh, expression we gave for uh, z zero, we have the summation of i over one to n lambda i z i min minus z zero. Nothing especially complicated though. Uh, we want that in average, our uh, error is, is, is zero. And uh, uh, this is expressed uh, usually is by saying that uh, the, uh, the estimate is unbiased. So we, we have no error on the mean. So we assume that uh, the expected value of the error is zero. And uh, the expected value of the error is uh, the expected value of hat z zero minus z zero. And when we uh, and there we substitute the whole formula that we obtained in the previous slide. Nothing especially special here. Um, we may we make we make some assumption, however, um, which is that. Uh, the mean, uh, the process that generates uh, the zeta variable, z variable, is a, in, is a, is well defined and it has an average and uh, possibly it also have a variance. So let's go and go ahead. And uh, we are going to, um, to do the algebra to obtain the, uh, the, the, the consequences of, of this uh, result. So the value, the expected value of the summation, which is, the, um, is just the summation of the expected values. And uh, because the expected value which is actually another summation over all the data we have in, in, in fact, is uh, a linear operator that uh, go uh, inside the can. This is actually the definition of a linear operator. We, we, can, show, we can show it in, in practice. Uh, what does it mean actually? What we, why we, we have the expected value? Uh, because actually we don't, uh, we don't think to have a single measure of Z sub i, but uh, we think to, uh, to have, for instance, a time series of uh, Z sub i, meaning we have a lot of, of measurement in, in the position high, for instance, varying in time or varying during different experiments. 
And so we, uh, when we are doing the expected value here, we are thinking that we are averaging over all the experiments or over all the time steps that we have in our time series. Uh, we can go ahead. We can go ahead and, um, for instance, uh, um, observing that the expected value of the lambda i uh, z high is actually lambda i times the uh, the expected value of z by uh, z sub i. This also for, for the same linearity question that. And for the same linearity, um, not question, but um, um, property that we uh, used before. But what is the expected value of, uh, of z sub i? The expected value of z sub i is just the mean of uh, z sub i. And we assume at the beginning that the z sub i uh, the, the, the process has a mean, and this mean is m. We also assume that the process is homogeneous, meaning that in any point, the mean of, of the process we are generating is equal. So the expected value of z sub i is equal to the expected value of z uh, of z zero. And both of them are uh, m and both for m and the expression is equal to zero. Therefore, uh, from this last expression, we derive the uh, very first conclusion, meaning that uh, the sum of, of all over the weights is one. We already saw this uh, type of um, normalization in the in inverse distance weighting. In fact, the, the meaning of the uh, of weighting that in that way the, the the weight in the inverse distance method is exactly the same that we used here. This is a property that we will use in the following. The second request is in fact that the the square error is minimum. What is the square error? But the square error is. Uh, uh, more or less that uh, z, uh, z hat z zero minus z zero squared take as expected value, meaning uh, uh, summed over all the experiment we have or over all the time in a time series. Um, we use the definition of the uh, hat z zero and we substitute here in the formula nothing special, just automatic. Uh, for, uh, for reason of calculation, we, made it, uh, we make a trick here. We just add and subtract the, the average. And um, we also do another trick because we want actually to cluster the, the terms, the, the addenda in the the summation in the various, the various addenda together in groups. So we just uh, had uh, some sub i uh, from one uh, to n lambda i uh, to the first, to the first um, um, m, just because the summation of the uh, lambda i is, is equal to one, as we demonstrated before. So we can, from in, in the next passage, we just cluster differently the terms. And uh, we, uh, we take all the terms with the summation uh, uh, together. And then what we do in the next patch is just developing the square of the term with the summation. And we have, say, we have two terms. We have to do the... Uh, two, term in the, in, in two, two terms in the most internal parentheses, and um, we do the square, uh, we have the square of the first parentheses and the square of the second parentheses, and then if we want to complete our 
calculation, we have to do the cross product uh, twice uh, because this is uh, the general rule to obtain the, the square of uh, uh, two addenda. So here we have the square, the first term is just the square of the of the summations, the second term is just the, the square of the, the other two terms, and the third term is uh, uh, the, the cross product between the two. Uh, we are farthing developing the squares here. Uh, developing the squares means, uh, yeah, it can be, it looks like a little bit complicated, but it's not in reality. It's just the, the, the abstract form, which is complicated. Uh, because uh, uh, taking the, we, we, we take the summation in the, that you see on top, and uh, we take that one and you multiply by the same term, but we change the internal, the internal indexes from E to J, and then you do all the things and you obtain the first term with the double, with the double summation over E and over J. This is exactly the square of the, of the first term will uh, leave uh, um, unchanged the other two terms though. We already uh, talk about the algebra of the expectation operator A, meaning that it, it, uh, it can be exchanged with the summations and it can be um, exchanged also with the, the lambda highs, the weights, which are numbers. So uh, the we say that the expected value is linear with this respect. So um, the expected value can be bring inside the, the summation. Uh, now we have a further passage, which is matter of definition, not of algebra, but uh, there is nothing here, just definition, meaning that we are defining a, a thing which is two point convariance. Uh, um, which is the covariance between two points, zi and zj, is just the, is defined as the expected value of the uh, zi minus the mean times zj minus the mean. So in formula, this is exactly uh, the one which is developed be, um, before. Uh, uh, which um, inform, uh, what, what does it mean, sorry? Uh, we, it does mean that uh, the formula that we have here on the bottom can be written in terms of covariances. And uh, in place of the expected value uh, under the summation on the, on the first things, we can put the covariance between ZE and ZJ. In the in the expect in place of the expected values of the z zero minus m square, we can put the covariance of z zero and z zero, and then on the other we can put the covariance between z zero and z i. Actually, we are not done yet with the uh, with the definition, but actually we define another stuff which is the covariance, the variogram, which actually is related to the covariances. And we define the, the we define the, the variogram as the covariance between ZE and ZE, which is actually the variance. If you think about the definition here, look, instead of J here and on top, you put I, and you have the expected value of zi minus m times zi minus m, which is actually the definition of the variance. So what, what, what you, you, can, you do here, you, sorry, you, okay, you have the, the first term in the definition of the, the variogram is exactly the variance minus the, cross covariance, 
meaning the covariance between the, the point i and the point j. At this point, uh, the, and the error, uh, just doing the substitutions can be written in terms of variograms. And we have the expression that you see, uh, that you see for the variogram. I hope that you see all the screen, you, you don't see my face on the, on the last part of the equation. Now that we have a form for the error, we just have to do the, the, the derivative which is again, it is complicated from the point of view of, uh, of um, calculations because we have to derive uh, with respect to the, to the lambda sub i to, uh, to, to obtain the minimum error. We have to obtain those lambdas that minimize the, the square error. So if we have the, 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 the square error function, the minimizing the square error function means finding the extremal point uh, with respect to the lambda case, to the lambda things. So we derive, to, um, uh, we derive the formula uh, with the generic lambda key. And um, the formula actually simplify is, um, can be complicated, but uh, you can do, and you have to do by yourself at least, at least once. Then is, um, um, then it, it can be uh, forget, forgotten for the rest of your life, more or less. But once you have to do. Actually, here I did a little mod modification in the formula that maybe you don't understand. Instead of uh, writing uh, Z i uh, Z, uh, Z, J, uh, Z J I wrote modulus of X i X J. Actually, here I did a, a further step. I, I put inside a further assumption that I am using later on, but uh, um, actually is not necessary. Meaning here I I, I made the assumption that. Uh, the variograms are not a function of the single point separately, but they, they are just a function of the distance between the points, which is a strong assumption, for instance, that assume that, that the, the, our field of variables is isotropic. There is no anisotropy, no different in the different directions. Uh, but this actually uh, could not be always true. In any case, we can do without this assumption in the general case. And so we, um, we, we, we go ahead with the calculations. I don't want to be so boring to do all the calculation right now. The passages are correct. If you want to have in the general case, you just substitute uh, the modulus inside the parentheses of the variogram with just uh, xe, um, comma, xj, uh, xk, and you go ahead. What is the final result of, this, uh, of these things? The final result is that we obtain a, a, a linear system. Uh, gamma lambda, big gamma, big, big lambda equals to B. And these linear systems, uh, once solved, gives you the weights for which, from which we can give, give the, the estimated value of Z hat sub zero. We have then to solve this system, but how is done th this system actually? The big gamma is the two point variogram among location, meaning we, we take the definition of the variogram, we take the expected value of, um, um, of the difference between the measuring in two point for any instant of time, and we take the average. And this is, and this is producing the variogram. 
actually the variogram the central in the variogram is zero as you see uh, centrally which is an hypothesis that later on we relax and um, in fact in, in in this way we are not anymore mentioning space if you want it is, it is at this point if we want if we want to make a hypothesis about uh, how this matrix is done uh, potentially yeah, because all the po in all the points we do measurements we are able to know all these uh, the elements of of this matrix the lambdas contain the weights and they contain uh, also a one for because we have to solve a, a problem of me um, of minimization and the what is the b the b contains the variogram between the measurement and then the measured points and the, the uh, unknown point, um, unknown point. So essentially, the known the known term of the linear equation is unknown at this point. We have no other choice now that doing something for determine uh, this uh, known term. Otherwise, we cannot solve the linear system that we had before, and we cannot get our answers. We are not so in trouble, actually. Uh, uh, the main assumption here is the one that uh, in kind of was in the formula before, in some formulas before, for was a my mistake, actually. I shouldn't have put the, the variogram in that way. I will correct in a later version of this slide. Or oh, you will never correct as it usually happens. And uh, we here assume that the process is stationary and isotropic. Stationary means it's equal in all the points of space. Isotropic meaning that it's not changing with the direction. Uh, in this case, the covariance, uh, in the two point covariance, as you see before, uh, can be substituted by the covariance between the distances. So two points diff differently located in space, but at the same distance, have the same covariance. And then if we take a point, we do a circle, all the points that stay on the circle um, have the same covariance with the, uh, the point situated in, in the, the center of the circle. This uh, highly reduce our uh, requirements. Uh, also from the point of view of practical point of view because we have uh, we have more data than all the points at the same distance are from for, from the point of view of uh, of this case are the same point essentially and here it becomes a function of space if we do the previous hypothesis and we define h as the modulus, the distance between xe and xj, uh, then we can also show that the variogram can be um, written as the one, one over two, one half of the expected value of zeta x minus zeta x plus h and elevated to the square. Originally, the variograms were uh, um, were said to be semi-variograms because of this one half. But we will look, we will talk about variograms in any case. Um, if we do this hypothesis, we we don't have problem because uh, even if we don't know the vario the two point variograms with between the unknown point and the known point, we can use the uh, the point that are at the same distance of, of um, 
we we can use the other the other point to the rebuild the variogram the the, the relation between the, the variogram and the distances and then use this information to uh, to calculate the unknown term b in this case we are done i repeat this concept we don't have b but if we do the hypothesis that uh, the uh, the process which is generating our data is a uh, isotropic and homogeneous in space we actually don't need to know to have the measure in d because uh, the information we have at this point the information we have from the measure point is enough to get the variogram at the at the distance uh, through the distance to the varying distance and so it's just uh, we the only information we have to know for the unknown uh, for the unknown we have to find is the distance that separate the unknown point to the known point and then using the uh, we use the information that comes from the known point to get the variogram for for that distance Uh, so we can summarize our um, our estimation of the variograms in this way get the data from the gauges meaning the meaning the the measurements uh, build the empirical summary of variogram among existing data meaning we have the data we estimate the the semi variogram between them we have first the two point semi variograms then we make for instance the assumption that the process is homogeneous and we get, get the semi variogram depending on distances not on different points uh, having the uh, the having the uh, the empirical semi variogram is then not enough is not enough because uh, uh, yeah, we can build a semi variogram between points, uh, but it's not, it's not a function. So we can uh, try to get some function that more or less interpolate the, the empirical semi variogram into it, what we call a theoretical semi variogram, which is use this, this, uh, uh, this is, is called in this way. So we fit a model to the empirical semi variogram, and we then uh, further on we use the model. Uh, we use the theoretical semi variogram to calculate all the terms that in our linear systems, and then we solve the linear system. We can produce the solve the linear system for any point of the space, which is actually a very expensive procedure solving a system once is a is easy solving a system uh, one million of times is also easy but is annoying or uh, very long in, in times and times so so uh, in any case uh, we have computers that do that and we have an implementation of algorithms that try to do that in a fee in efficient way and in, in this point we can produce surfaces of of, uh, of measurements even in points where we we don't have any measure at this point we also want to estimate the error we, that we did with our estimates uh, because uh, error matter and in sometimes if, if the error is too large uh, our forecasting of um, variables is uh, useless or can be usually useless in, in some cases so estimating the error is absolutely necessary so for instance the estimation of the temperature uh, over time uh, in the in a certain point can be you see here um, in the red is measured and the the 
the blue is simulated, but you don't see blue here because we take a point where we have measurements. We um, get to uh, extrapolate the, measure, the, the, the temperature in that point uh, using the other measurement we have around, but without considering the point. And the estimation with the Krieging in this case is absolutely almost perfect. So we get a good result at the end. Uh, this is a field of measurements that we reproduce. Um, there are millimeter, millimeter hours reproduced. The two red point, the two red, uh, um, red dot are the elevation of the points, and um, the color, the shade of colors, give you the precipitation in millimeters per hour in any point of the space here. It is quite a nice result. Uh, this is temperature instead. You see, as you see here, temperature in February and January. Um, probably you don't, I don't know if you see the, if you see the, uh, the legends here, but you can see on the slide in any case. And uh, obviously in, Ju uh, in June is much, not, not, Ju not July, June. In June 15, you have the temperature much higher. And you see that you have gradients in each uh, of, the, of the forecasting here, the and the statistics of forecasting of temperature. And um, you have a gradient, the lighter, the less, the point with less than temperature are more elevated. So I think I, I have finished also this part and we can exit here, we can stop the recording.